Okay, my dearest children, come and join me on menti.com. You can, um, hang on, how do I share? You can search for menti.com. I'm actually um, supposed to share the, the QR. Go to menti.com and key in 6227975. Ah, nampak tak? The QR code there, you can scan and you will be directed to menti.com. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, you can scan the QR code over there and join us on Mentimeter because I want to know you. The first question here is, what is your average English score? Eh, ramai ni dapat 90 and above. Then I can pension early lah today. That's okay. You can answer truthfully because nobody can see your response. Okay, your response is coming. We have 57 people in Menti already. If you are not able to scan the QR, you can join menti.com and key in 6227965. 137 people have answered. Still, the majority today are B plus to A, A minus A students. These A students, why are you still here? A plus students. Huh? You want A plus? Okay. A plus students, why are you here? A plus plus plus. Okay, I am going to proceed to the next question. We have 157, 158 people and majority of you are, are B plus students and above. Um, this is followed by C to B students, B minus students, 46 people here. We have very little um, portion of students who do not pass English and also small portion of you who usually get D to D, basically. Okay, let's check out the next one. This is an open question. What deters you from getting 20 over 20 in writing paper? Apa yang menyebabkan you tak dapat markah penuh in writing paper? Test. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, write it down here. Grammar, ada yang cakap tak sempat, basically not enough time, or lack of vocabulary, or you don't know, you don't have any idea. You don't know how to spell. Okay, let's let's go through your responses. Not enough time, not enough time. Complex sentence. Titi ni maksudnya nangis ke? Grammar, lack of time, lack of vocabulary, tak ada idea. Grammar, not enough time. Lack of ideas, no ideas. Salah faham question. This is vocab issue lah. 17 over 20, tak sempat. Okay. No ideas and so on. Okay, thank you so much for your response. Now coming, let's go to the last question for writing part two and part three. What do you want to learn today? What do you think would help you to achieve the highest possible score? Like how to write a story, for example. Everything, okay. Let's be realistic. You are with me for the next two hours you tinggal now. So it's Hardly possible to cover everything. Learn how to write complex sentences. Hmm. Okay. Everything to minimize grammar error. Okay, that I I correct you already. Um, paper two. Okay. Paper two. Obviously, we are we are learning paper two. Bombastic words. Review. Review. Do we all review writing? Okay. How to write complex sentences. My listening tips, oh, okay. Paper two, paper two, grammar tips, basically the proper way to write, how to get 20 over 20, how to use less common lexis, essays using bombastic words. Why are you guys so um, infatuated with bombastic words? Bombastic words will help you getting C2, only if it's, you tau kan, the band C2, B1 and so on. It will help you getting C2. Uh, only if you use bombastic words naturally. Uh, in other words, it, it only if you use those words in such a way it, that it doesn't make you look like you are trying so hard. You know, some students they 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 want to try so hard to impress the examiner by using bombastic words here and there, but they are contextually inaccurate. So um, you don't need to, to use like up to five bombastic words. One or two in one essay is sufficient. 
KSC and Grammar. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. You may leave Mentimeter and let's focus on what I have prepared for you today. Let's talk in general very, very, very quickly about your SPM English Paper 2. How many questions are there in English writing uh, or English Paper 2? Ada berapa soalan altogether? Three parts, right? We have part one. Okay, while waiting, we have three parts. What, what is part one? What's actually part one called? Short communicative message. So I know that for the past few years, email, have, uh, email writing has come out. Um, but please don't be too complacent thinking that email will come out again because the part is called short communicative message. In other words, it is also probable that short letter or also short message will come out. Okay, so don't be too, too comfortable thinking that email might come out. So you need to be prepared with whatever possibility because it's called short communicative message. Part one is short communicative message. How many marks are allocated for short communicative message? 20 marks. Oh, or oh, before that, all together for the entire paper two writing, how much time is allocated for you? Berapa minit diperuntukkan untuk writing paper? One hour and 30 minutes or 90 minutes. Because of that, I would recommend that you spend uh, 20 minutes for this part. I will explain why later. And 20 marks just now. How many words are you supposed to write for writing part one? Berapa patah perkataan? 80 to 100, but 80 to 100 words, right? All right, okay, so you can write as long as you want um, with the condition that you don't exceed the time. Now let's talk about part two, guided writing. How many, uh, what's the marking? I mean, how many marks are allocated for guided writing? 20 marks also. I would recommend that you spend 30 minutes for guided writing. 20 marks again. And you need to write how many words? 125 to 150 only. This is for you to manage your time, especially for those who say tak sempat, tak sempat nak siapkan essay writing here, right? And lastly, what is part three? Extended writing. How many questions are there in extended writing? Three questions. What are, basically you have to answer one out of three questions. What are the possible types of essay that might come out in part three? Report, review, story, article. So um, based on the numbers of hands raised, I think it's only fair that we start covering review first. Uh, but we'll cover part two and then review and then story. And hopefully we have time to do report. But I am doubtful that we have that time. Okay, so now let's talk about your, uh, this one, how many words for part three? 200 to 250 words. Marks allocated for part two, eh, part three, 20 marks also. So your writing paper would contribute 60 marks to your whole SPM paper, 25% weightage. Now let's talk about the marking breakdown. 20 marks are allocated for you, right? What's the smaller breakdown for this? Okay, organization, five. Communicative achievement, five. Some more? Language, five. Content, excellent. So content is usually the easiest part for you to score. You just have to address everything that the question wants. Um, perhaps you may struggle with the top three. Okay, what's organization? Organization today, nothing apa actually. What do you think they want to look at in organization? Yeah, uh, if it's a story, whether your story links or whether you have cohesiveness. Ada kesinambungan from point A to point B. It's not like when you tell, you tell a story about um, siapa ya, contohnya Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, for example. Uh, if you're writing about him in an essay uh, entitled the someone you look up to or an admirable leader, for example. And then you went on by, by starting, uh, you went on uh, talking about his 
his childhood years. And then suddenly you talk about him already being the prime minister. Lepas tu you return balik, you go stand balik, talking about his hardship in order to become the prime minister. So that is what you struggle. Uh, that is an example of someone who struggles with organization and you may lose marks there. Okay, what about communicative achievement? What is communicative achievement? Pencapaian komunikasi. What would the examiner look for in communicative achievement? I'll just jot down here. For example, if you are required to write an email to your principal, do you say, hey, what's up, bro? Or do you start your email with, um, it is hoped that this email reach you well? Which one? A is, hey, what's up, bro? B, it is a hope that this email reaches you well. B, so that is what we call communicative achievement. Your language style. Whether or not you use the right style, the right choice of words to the right audience. For example, if you're writing a guided writing part two, and they say you are supposed to write this article to be published in a magazine. And the magazine is uh, a school magazine. What kind of language do you use? Formal or casual? Uh, it could be semi-casual. But it's, it's safer for you to use formal language. So this is where communicative achievement lies in. This is where you will be assessed in communicative achievement. Whether or not you use the right vocabulary, the right language style to address the right audience. Okay, kalau saya laju sangat, boleh suruh pelahan kan? Kalau tak faham saya cakap dalam bahasa Inggeris, you can stop me and ask me to translate. Because uh, eventually you are here to learn today. Okay, and language obviously covers grammar, spelling, sentence structure. Tadi ada tulis complex sentence, compound sentence, those are all under language. We are going to cover part two. And then we are going to cover review and story and we'll see if we have the time to cover other things and at the end we will have a quiz session on quizzes and there are prizes already ready for the top eight um, and the quizzes are all on the common grammar errors students usually make in essay writing now let's move on guided writing there are basically two possibilities of question, of the type of question that may come out in guided writing. Ada dua jenis ataupun uh, dua jenis essay yang mungkin keluar dalam guided writing. Number one is an essay in which you need to give your opinion. Like um, your class is going on a trip. So you need to suggest where do you want to go. So that's one, your opinion. What's the other one? I like this one, yeah. You are going on a trip and you want, uh, you want to give your opinion on where, where should you go. What's the second possible type of question? Let's check out the other one. The other type of question is based on your general knowledge. It's still, it is still an opinion-based essay, but your opinion must be guided with a general knowledge, with a factual knowledge, that is known by everybody. So you cannot, it, it, it cannot be something or anything that is made up, unlike the first one here. Okay, so um, that's the difference. Number one is like talking about an opinion, but more like your desire, your dream. The second one here is an opinion, but this opinion must be guided, must be based on a general knowledge. Understand the difference? Okay, so now we are going to look at how this is especially for students who, number one, have an issue to manage your time. Number two, have an issue to manage your ideas. I have prepared the way, ataupun, this is not a conclusive way to write guided writing, but this is more like a guideline, especially for those who don't know how to write guided writing, don't know what to how to start your guided writing. You don't know how to... Uh, elaborate your guided writing. Faham? Okay, jadi, and please also note that this is also the way you can apply in your article writing if you so wish to answer article in part 3. Okay, jadi let's take a look here. Uh, how many paragraphs must you write in guided writing? 
Actually, there is no conclusive uh, number of paragraph. Minimum three, maximum whichever number that you want. But four is just nice. Let's say you need to write 150 words, right? 150 divided by three, you will get about, please help me do maths, 50 words per paragraph. Or if you wish to divide by four paragraphs, you will need to write about 35 words per paragraph. This is how you manage your ideas. Okay? All right. And then also, for guided, uh, and then also, your essay, you must remember, you must associate your essay with a burger. What do we have in a burger? Who ate uh, McDonald's? Oh, sorry, KFC burger just now. Oh, you, you had burger just now. Okay. What are the elements of a burger? The buns on top. Who oh, still say hi, you all? Okay, we have bun on top and at the bottom. And we have whatever protein or veggies in the middle here, right? Okay, and sauce, mayo, and so on in here. So you must remember every essay that you write, part one, part two, part three, is like a burger. It has to have a bun on top, which is the introduction. It has to be covered at the bottom by another bun, which is supposed to be your conclusion. And whatever that you put in the middle, whatever that is sandwiched in the middle, is the content. So how many paragraphs you, you like to put, it's like you have the uh, beef patty or chicken patty, and then you have the veggie, lettuce, sauces, and whatnot. So because I, I have marked hundreds of essays, some students, they have the tendency to miss out the introduction and also the conclusion. You all, for guided writing, one short sentence concluding the paragraph is sufficient to show that you are concluding the whole essay. Don't leave the essay hanging. That's, the, that's some students' um, biggest issue. Okay, so some students may be asking, teacher, I don't know how to start writing my guided, uh, guided writing. How do I start my essay? So here's a tip. Look at uh, the, top, the, uh, the top box there. Here's a tip on how you write your introduction paragraph. Remember that this is merely a guideline. It's not compulsory. If your teacher at school has uh, shared something better that you feel more comfortable to use, you can use whatever that your teacher uh, shares, okay? Jadi, for guided writing, I usually suggest that students start with a general statement. General statement in Bahasa Melayu, I would usually equate general statement with a mukadimah. The question is, what do you write in a general statement? Like your first, paragraph, first sentence. I want to move around, but this thing is stuck here. So I'm not able to do that right now. What do you write in general statement? Definition, I like that. Come on. Ha, ha, ha. General statement. Uh, okay, what must you write in general statement? Personal view of what? What does the personal view contain? Of the matter, your opinion on the matter. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe you would say I would call that the the background of the issue, the background of the of the issue or the matter. And if you know some history about the history about the matter, what else can you write in your general statement? There are so many ways. Ni untuk orang yang tak ada idea. Katakan you tak tahu nak bagi definition. You don't know how to write your background. You don't know the history. How else do you write? What? Something that happened is the background. Any other ideas? A simple question. Okay. Uh, feeling is like the opinion lah. Okay, I'll write view here. View or you can ask the reader any question. It's okay to write a question because that shows a variety of sentences that you use. Boleh mulakan dengan soalan. 
Do you know that um, post COVID-19, uh, sorry, do you know that online learning has become more popular during the lockdown um, due to COVID-19? So that's not a statement, that's a question. And then you, you proceed by sharing your, uh, your, your explanation and whatnot. Okay, how else do you, what other ways do you use to write the general statement? Ada lagi cara lain? Ada lagi ni? If you have any idioms or proverbs or if you memorize any quotes from anyone uh, famous, any popular quotes. Okay, I would suggest a dialogue also. Dialogue is like a quote. Okay, no, not dialogue for guided writing. Okay, so you can use at least one or two of these approaches in the beginning of your guided writing. You mulakan your mukadima with any of this. And then a TC statement. What's a TC statement? It is a sentence to show the direction or the purpose of you writing the essay. So that when, when the reader or especially the examiner reads the first paragraph, they will immediately know what will you be uh, elaborating in your whole essay? So this statement is like, how do I put this? The purpose of you writing the essay. Tujuan you menulis essay tersebut. Okay, next is the body paragraph. And then we will analyze an actual essay. I need to manage my time. We have... Well, I am very bad at maths. How many minutes more do we have? One hour, 40 minutes, okay. 150 minutes, okay. Your body paragraph. You, for those who struggle to find a way to write your body paragraph, I suggest, but as I mentioned, this is a disclaimer once again, this is not the conclusive way to write a guided writing. Ni bukan satu-satunya cara untuk tulis guided writing. If you have come across any other way that you feel comfortable to use, use them. This is a guideline at the last minute, especially for those who have no idea whatsoever to write a guided writing, okay? So, I would call this standing a T technique. E, 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 where you begin your essay or your body paragraph with a topic sentence. What is a topic sentence? Ayat topic, kan? In Bahasa Melayu. But it is a, a statement a sentence in which you tell the reader what you are going to elaborate in that paragraph. Okay, we will go through an, uh, an essay sample later. Topic sentence contains the main idea of the paragraph. And then, you need to elaborate the idea, obviously. So how do you, how do you go about elaborating your ideas? Apa dia? I, I heard the word situation. I, I didn't get the first part. Situation what? Oh, WH question. Yes. I would say five wives and one husband. Okay, what's the what 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 are the wives? Why? Why? Where? What? Who? When? And what's the H? Husband. How? Okay. How or how many? So if you want to elaborate, for example, you already have a topic sentence, you don't know what to elaborate, ask yourself. Is the question where suitable for me to ask in this? So if it's not, you ask other question. Maybe I should ask myself the question why and so on. Okay, so that's how you elaborate your main idea. And next, if you have an example, give your example. But what happens if you don't have an example? Nothing happens. It's okay. You can just write your elaboration longer. Perhaps you have one sentence for topic sentence, and then you write two or three sentences for elaboration if you don't have any example. Kalau tak ada contoh, panjangkan huraian dia. All right. Uh, so the same applies for paragraph three. Last one. The bottom part of the burger. The conclusion. What must you write in your conclusion? I wouldn't say must. What can you write in a conclusion? I hope, yes, hope. And you may want to re-emphasize your earlier point. 
So for example, if you're saying the main causes of pollution in Malaysia are so, so, and so, you can repeat that in your conclusion. And then you can end your essay by giving a hope or suggestion or any kind of advice. So all of this will be written, uh, will make a good guided writing. Any questions so far? Let me check the, uh, the, the comment in here. Okay, we have some question. What is organization stands for in essay marking? Well, I've already covered that. Organization is the cohesiveness of your points. Kesinambungan, kesinambungan isi, whether your points are organized or not. Some other points you tersusun ataupun tidak. Are you going to teach us listening? Oh, I'm sorry, darling, I don't. But um, if you want to... If you, if you want to revise revision, you can go to bacflix.com. Am I right? And you can check out the 100 minutes, uh, SBM in 100 minutes or past year, last year seminar because last year I covered speaking. Uh, I covered listening because last year we had two parts. So I covered listening in the first part and uh, writing in the second part. But I figured that writing is more technical. That's why I intend to cover writing today. Okay. So if you feel like uh, doing revision on your listening, you can check out uh, BACflix or SPMflix.com. Okay, let's move on to the essay sample. Can I get like one person to volunteer to read this? Kita nak bagi hadiah lah to volunteers. Oh, okay. Kalia can, Kalia will pass the microphone to any volunteer. Okay, siapa tunjuk orang lain dia yang kena baca. Oh, okay, we have the a volunteer over here. Okay, give a clap to our friend here. Single clap. Single clap. Double clap. Multiple claps. Can you introduce yourself, your school? Hi, my name is Kristina. I'm from SMK Alam Damai. Alam Damai. Alam Damai Ceras. Okay, uh, can I have you to read the question first? This is on page, what page is this? Page four. You must answer this question. Write an answer in 105 between 150 words in appropriate style. Your class has been discussing whether online learning is good or bad to this new normal era. And your teacher has asked you to write an essay about what benefits you would gain from online learning. In your essay, you should write about how online learning helps teachers and students reasons for your choice, what benefits you gain from online learning. Write your essay using all the notes and and giving reasons for your point of view. Thank you so much. Welcome. Okay. So, give a clap to your friend here. Here's a gift from BAC. Okay, so you are to write, you are to elaborate the three points here. Number one, how online learning helps teachers and students. Remember the keyword here is our teachers and students. If that say you miss out the benefits or how online learning helps uh, students, you only discuss how online learning helps teachers, what would happen to you? You may lose marks for content. So this is one mark they will be looking for. This is another one mark or uh, one mark. Next, reasons for your choice. Uh, in other words, the justification. How many reasons must you give? More than one. Minimum? Minimum two. Why minimum two? Because it says here reasons. So you have to read the instruction very carefully. If it says give reason without any S, uh, one is sufficient, but if it says reasons, you have to give minimum two or else you will lose marks. So two marks for the second part here. Senang je nak score maka. I mean, five marks is like a piece of cake for content. And last one, benefits you gain from online learning. How many benefits must you give? Minimum, minimum. Two benefits also. Why? Because benefits is in plural. That's why you need to give two benefits. 
So there are six points. If you touch five, you will get five marks. You won't get six. Five is maximum for content. Now, based on the guideline I have given earlier, general statement and PC statement, we are going to read the first paragraph and see how this, this paragraph applies the strategy just now. Can I have a second volunteer? Perhaps, uh, I, I, want to, I wanted to say a gentleman, but she raises her hand first. That's okay, we have so many essays to read. Okay, introduce yourself and also your school. Single clap, single clap, double clap, multiple claps. Okay, please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Nurin Kashrina and I'm from SMK Sri Tasik. Oh, I hear you. Your name is? My name is Nurin Kashrina. Nurin. Yes, uh, I'm from SMK Sri Tasik. Sri Tasik is where? Uh, Permaisuri. Oh, Cheras also. Oh, yeah. Why are there a lot of Cheras people here? Any more Cheras people here? Oh, do you guys come together? No. Is there any announcement in Chira saying that there is a, an a English SVM seminar today? No, okay. Okay, please read paragraph one for us. COVID-19 has drastically changed the way we live. In 2022, when the whole world went into lockdown due to this pandemic, people began to adapt to doing things online, and this includes learning. Online learning has since become a convenient and the go-to option for both educators and students because of its convenience and affordability. Thank you, Noreen. Okay, which part is the general statement in this paragraph? Mana part, dalam, part, dalam ni, which one is the general statement? The first sentence, how many sentences do we have again? Two sentences only, yes. So the first part is the general statement making the second sentence the TC statement. My question to you is, what approach did I use in the first sentence, the general statement? We have so many just now, right? We had... Um, yeah, we have definition, background, history, view, question, ideas, proverbs, quotes. So what did I use in the general statement here? Did I put any view? No, I did not. There's, it's not a view. It's a history and it's also a background. Because I wanted to touch online learning, but because the question mentioned about new era, new normal, new normal, it somehow relates to COVID-19. So... The general statement uses history and also uh, background. What other ways can you write for this specific question? What other ways can you write your general statement? How else do you open your paragraph? You can give a definition of online learning. So online learning perhaps is you can, you can define it in your own words. Like you're saying online learning is um, a method uh, or an approach of learning using devices which also requires internet connection and whatnot and you don't have to go to school and whatnot. Okay, so that's one. Next, if you notice the second paragraph, uh, the second sentence here, uh, this is the TC statement. Remember, the TC statement is a statement, me or you, telling the examiner or the reader what you are going to write in your whole essay. So here, uh, it says that um, online learning has become a convenience because of, number one, the convenience it offers and affordability. In other words, when you read the whole essay, you will eventually come across the discussion on how online learning is convenient and how online learning is affordable. Okay. Next, can we read the third paragraph? Many steps, Leah, today. Any volunteer? Oh, we have the gen a gentleman over there. Uh, on the left there. I wish those who are online on TikTok can read too. But I know you're reading. Um, you're reading in your head. Okay, single clap. Single clap. Double clap. Multiple claps. Introduce your name, your school, and you may proceed by reading second paragraph. 
Hello, my name is Ahmad Zakwanlutfi, and I'm from St. John's Institution. Uh, St. John. But I didn't get your name. I only get Ahmad. Ahmad Zakwanlutfi. Zakwan. Okay, second paragraph. First and foremost, online learning offers convenience for teachers and students. Traveling can be time-consuming and costly, and attending classes from wherever we are helps save us time, helps us to save time and money. We no longer have to waste hours on commuting, and the, and the time saved can be utilized to doing revision or house chores. Thank you, Zakwan. OK, so um, the second paragraph here, what's the topic sentence here? What is, which one is the topic sentence? Remember the TEE for uh, body paragraph. The first sentence is the topic sentence because it tells you what you are going to expect in paragraph two. So here it expects you to understand that online learning offers convenience for teachers and students. And the rest of the uh, paragraph talks about the explanation. So what kind of explanation, what kind of wife or husband did I use to elaborate paragraph two? What could why? Eh? Traveling can be time consuming. I think it's a combination of what and also why. Why, why does um, online learning, uh, why is online learning convenient? Okay, uh, do you guys get the whole idea now? So how do you write a body paragraph? What should, what should include in the body paragraph? The topic sentence, which is the main idea, and then the elaboration, and if any example to include, you write the example. I'm going to skip paragraph three because um, the flow or the style of writing is similar to paragraph two. So we are moving straight to paragraph four. Now volunteer juga ke? Okay, Kak Leah has already uh, stand up. We have a volunteer over here, another gentleman. Okay, single clap, single clap, single clap. Single clap, double clap, multiple claps. Introduce yourself, your name and your school. Uh, hello, my name is Muhammad Akil bin Azhari. Akil? Uh, yes, Akil. And I school at SMK Bukit Sentosa. Bukit Sentosa, uh, Rawang? Yes, Rawang. Okay. In conclusion, the global response to COVID-19 pandemics has propelled online learning into a central role in education. Its convenience, eliminating the need for travel and reducing costs, has made it the preferred option for both educators and students. As we move forward, the enduring impact of online learning is undeniable, reshaping the way we approach education in the post-pandemic world. Thank you. Okay, give a clap to your friend for the bravery to read. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that your conclusion should at least contain these two. The emphasized thesis statement and the either a hope or suggestion. What? Where is the emphasized thesis statement in here? Beginning with what sentence? In conclusion here, until? Until students. And the rest of the paragraph, I mean the last sentence is basically a hope uh, on online learning in the future. Okay, so as I mentioned, the same way um, the same technique to write guided writing can be applied to write article for part three. Only for part three, you may add one more paragraph if you wish to write five paragraphs. Excuse me. <coughs> okay, any question for part two at the moment? How to get full marks for speaking? <coughs> Can we start our sentence with N? Okay, I have a, a legit question here. Sorry. Can you start your sentence with N, A-N-D? Not in SPM, but you can write it in your blog or if you write a book or your um, Instagram caption and so on, you, you can, but not in SPM. In SPM, <coughs> 
SPM writing is the platform for you to express yourself, but at the same time, you need to play safe because your future is at stake. You don't want to, you know, um, go overboard and be rebellious and whatnot because um, you want to, you know, I don't know, express yourself or impress the examiner so much so that it affects your marks. So just play safe for SPM. Just get the A plus and further your studies at BAC and then go get decent job and whatnot. Okay? Banyak I promo ni, huh? Okay, next. Uh, we are done with guided writing. Uh, let me address some questions here. Uh, how many sentences for intro? Uh, there's no standard, standard. Uh, uh, there's no exact or accurate sentences you need to write. But I have provided the number of words, the suggested number of words for you to write for guided writing. Because you have to write 125, 250 in guided writing. If you wish to write three paragraphs, you need to write about 50 words per paragraph. So 50 words can be three to four sentences. However, if you wish to write longer paragraph, which is four paragraphs, your, your number of words per paragraph can be shorter, which is 35 per paragraph. Okay, and I want to ask you this again. What happens if you write more than 150 words? Nothing happens. But what happens if you write shorter than 125? You may lose marks for content, organization, okay? So make sure you reach that 125 marks. <coughs> so for the part three, do we do the same as part two? Depending on the type of essay, because we are jumping straight to review writing right now. Are you guys ready? You don't sound ready. Are you guys ready? All right, thank you. Oh, to those who are online, if you guys are ready, please type ready. Oh, the type R, R just. Please type R already in the chat section. Okay, let's go to review writing. What page is it? Why do you guys like writing review? Eh? Easy. And I think another another reason why you like review because these days the trend is all about review, especially when you go online, right? Food review, um, book review, places review, yes, uh, especially vacation on, on places to go to visit. What else do you review? Cafe or products and whatnot. Okay, please turn to this page. Page 11. All right, are you guys with me on page 11? Aspects to review in review writing. But before we discuss this, I would like to discuss some things. Do you remember when I said you need to spend 40 minutes? Okay, you have 90 minutes, right? I want to use this. You have 90 minutes or one hour and a half to do your essay. I suggested that you spend 20 minutes for part A and part 1. Part 1, 30 minutes for part 2. And 40 minutes for part 3. I'm not giving this saja saja je. There's a reason to this because from now onwards, whenever you do your practice, essay practice at home, please have a timer with you. And please use this timing timing guide, guideline for you, timing breakdown for you. Okay, the reason why I broke the timing as such is because of the number of words you need to write. Okay, so for those who had, like you mentioned, you had an issue with timing just now, right? I'm going to explain how you can manage your time, especially in part three now. So say you have 40 minutes in uh, to write part three. How many words must you write in part three again? 202, 250 words. Your seniors had to write 350 words in the same allocated time, 40 minutes back then. But now you only have to write 250. 
100 words shorter. So this shouldn't be a problem for you. Now, how do you break the timing better? I will break it down as such. Uh, 40 minutes. 5 times 5 is 35. Correct. 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 3 and 7. Okay, these are all minutes. And if you are my student, I mean, if you are my actual student who, who meets me weekly, because I have my own group of SPM students, I would usually have a timer whenever they write essay so that they have an idea how long is uh, every component here. Now let's check what are the breakdowns for. Seven minutes is for you to plan your essay or to brainstorm ideas. So you don't compromise the seven minutes. Macam, Alah, tak yalah, terus tulis lah, nanti tak sempat. No, it's like cooking. It's like building a house without a proper plan, without having the materials. Macam memasak, tapi tak, ada, tak cukup barang. And end up, you have to go out and purchase more ingredients and continue cooking, which is a waste of time. So make sure you plan your essay well, what to write in every paragraph within the first seven minutes. Okay, so at home, whenever you write your essay, Make sure you have your timer with you, time seven minutes. Whether you can come up with a good plan, good brainstorm ideas in just seven minutes. Okay? Now, every five minutes here is dedicated to write every paragraph. So this is paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, paragraph four, and paragraph five. Meaning, again, whenever you do your own practice, Make sure you don't exceed five minutes to write every paragraph. Jangan lebih lima minit apabila menulis setiap satu paragraph. What is this three minutes for? Rechecking. Okay. Because I run online class, I will put the timer on the screen. So I will say, okay, everyone, now you can start your first paragraph. They will start. And if they don't manage to finish within five minutes, they know that they have to work harder to ensure they will be able to finish writing every paragraph in five minutes. Okay? So this is one way for you to manage your time. Because I believe that everyone can write a good essay. If let's say I give you a homework, you have to write this essay, submit to me in two weeks' time. Everyone can come up with a good essay, especially with chat GPT, especially with Google and whatnot. But the question is, can you all, SPM candidates, write a good essay in 40 minutes without the help of technology and whatnot? That's the real deal. And this is when, with only two weeks' time, this is where and how you practice writing. Jangan, jangan balik rumah, tulis essay, uh, sambunglah pergi makan, and then no timing. And then I know that a lot of you can write good essay, but ask yourself if you, if you can write a good essay in 40 minutes. If you can write a 20 over 20 essay in just 40 minutes. So when you do your practice, have a timer with you. I'm not sure if anyone else has told you this. If not, I'll be the first one to tell you. Write your essay with a timer next to you. Okay? Next. Is someone trying to airdrop something here? I click decline. Eh? All right, next. Let's return to review. And the timing breakdown just now applies for part three. What are, uh, let's move on to review. Okay. What are the possible aspects that mm, you may have to review in your essay? I mean, not aspects. Things, uh, what are the things that you may probably need to review in your essay? Huh? Okay. Things. Aesthetics. Oh, that's the aspect. I mean, before that, what are the 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 things that the the matter that you need to review? Apa benda yang you can review? What place? Okay. Restaurant is also a place. Food. Okay. Food. Book. Drinks. Device. What are there? What are those? Uh, object. I would say products. Okay, someone mentioned hobby or a vacation. 
or a visit to a spa. What is that? Interest. Place. We, we are, there's a place already. I would conclude it as experience. All right. Now, the possible products that may come out in SPM are two. One is tangible. You know what's tangible or not? Tangible is something you can hold, okay? Tangible or physical products, or the other one is intangible. What are the examples of intangible products? All right, tangible and non-tangible. Kalau negara, place. Ini untuk product, benda. Okay, what are examples of tangible products first? Clothes, books, um, food. Anything that you can hold with your hands. What are non-tangible products? You cannot hold, but it's still a product. Service will fall under experience. This is product. Ebook, some more? Anything virtual, like you download a game and you want to review the online game. Music, video, movie, something that you cannot hold or touch, but they are still products. This can be... Virtual also. Lah. Virtual products will, will fall into tangible, uh, non-tangible products. Okay? Um, what are the examples of experience that you may be required to review? Vacation? Travel vacation? Some more? Like I mentioned just now, you, you went for a spa treatment. The whole treatment, the whole spa experience uh, is an experience. So another part, experience can be divided into two. One is a free experience, like when you go to a beach, like when you go to Pan, uh, Teluk Kemang, Teluk Kemang, Pantai Chenang, where, wherever beach that you go, it's free, right? So it's a free experience. Another one is uh, an experience that you have to pay. What do we call that? That is called a service. Perkhidmatan, like spa treatment. And then what, what are other examples of services? Um, you use, most of you use phones, right? Your telco services, for example. And you go to uh, repair your phone. Whatever service that you get from the phone repair shop. Um, tailor, if you, you, if you have a custom-made clothes and whatnot, whatever service that you enjoy would fall under service. And place could be any, a beach, a waterfall, um, restaurant, but usually restaurant, I would, I would usually put restaurant under service because there are more to elaborate if it's a service. Okay, now, what are, this is where we discuss the aspects. What are the aspects to review? For example, you don't have any idea at all. I don't know what to review. What are some of the possible aspects to review for a product? The price. Okay, some more. Quality. Quality ni is uh, like... A bit too general. What else? What can you specifically talk when we talk about quality? Hmm? Rating. Okay, rating usually at the end. Rating tiga tiga pun ada rating. What other aspects do you talk? I know quality, yes, but quality, there are many types of quality. Okay, let's let's focus on food. What do you talk when what do you what aspects can you touch? The texture, some more material, ingredients or material, depending on the products that you want to review. Hey, tadi apa? Uh, texture, sorry. Some more? If you buy something from TikTok shop. Uh, and you receive it in a parcel, right? The packaging. Or the design, yes. Some more? 
Remember, if you need to review a phone, for example, what, what do you talk about it? The features. All of these are quality. That's why quality can be... Um, qual quali when you talk about quality, the range is very wide. So you need to be specific. This is to help you have more ideas to write. What else? Thigh. Size. Portion, I would say portion or size. Any other things for product? Uh, for example, if it's a story, a book, or a movie, for example, what, what do you touch on? The storyline, the characters, which character do you like the most? Do you like the storyline? Is the storyline making you um, sad or making you feel bored? Oh, the author, whether the author is popular. Uh, I wouldn't touch that. Visibility is like how? Accessibility. This is for example of a, oh, this is an example of what product? Like, oh yes, for example, if you are reviewing a game, online game, whether it's easy, for you to access, or there's so much button. Okay, I would put that. Accessibility. I'm not sure. I have a hunch that non-tangible products may not come out. This is only my personal hunch. You know why? Because most of you are urban students. SPM, um, people who make SPM questions, they would put into consideration students from the rural areas who have no devices, no internet, internet connection. So they would think of anything um, between these three, among these three, to review. So they, the, the question must prepare all types of students, urban students, non-urban students, rural students, for the same access to the experience. Understand? So I'm not sure if non-tangible non product may come out, but it is best to prepare. Okay, now let's talk about service and experience. What to write? Uh, what aspects are you writing for service or experience? Yes, price again. Some more? Remain a customer service, I like that. If it's a service, write about customer service. Facilities, good. Facilities, some more. Waiting time is the. I'll put that. Waiting time. Yeah, that would fall under customer service. What else? Imagine yourself going to a restaurant and you have to review the restaurant, the service that you get. The atmosphere or the ambience. Environment. Environment is another word for ambience. Some more? Ambience too is the vibe you're getting at the restaurant. Is it too crowded? Does it give you a chill, like chill kind of vibe? Uh, mm, the aesthetic of the place also, yes. That would fall under the service, the customer service. Huh? Some more? What else do you review? Imagine going to a waterfall, what do you review? The view would fall under ambience here. Environment, basically. The experience. The activities that you will be able... I, I will write specific to help understand. The activities that you can do, if let's say it's a free uh, place, a free one, what can you do at the beach? Perhaps you can ride a banana boat. Or you can build a sand castle and whatnot. Uh, you can also talk about the distance from wherever you are. Like how much time does it take to get there from your house? Okay, because usually the question is like write uh, a review and send it to your um, newsletter, your your neighborhood newsletter. So everyone who reads that is ba are basically your neighbor. 
Okay, the distance. And what else? Parking. Where the parking is, parking spot is easily accessible for you, easily, I mean, um, you can easily get a parking or not, some more. Accessibility also. Whether you can go to the place with the public transport. I hear some girls shouting something from upstairs. What else? Huh? Hi, Ting. Hygiene. Okay, cleanliness. All right. Not necessarily. Because it's, it's, it can be under facilities. But you can divide it. Okay, the reason we are discussing this is, for example, if you were to review one thing, this gives you idea. This will help you think, have I covered this? Have I covered cleanliness? Have I covered facilities? Have I covered the activities that I can do? I can do? This will help you gain, generate more ideas for you to write. Understand? Now, let's say if you were to review a place alone. It's like I keep on forgetting students on uh, TikTok. Let me see. Oh, they are ch chatting about something else. That's okay. So, what do you discuss when you talk about a place? Say that place is free. Free, free, free. The distance per day. Entry of what? Oh, what do you need to... Entry requirement, okay. Facilities. Facilities, some more. The activities to do. Some more. Accessibility, excellent. Whether you can go there with public transport or not. Or whether parking is an issue or not. Aesthetic, also view, environment, the ambience. And the activities to do there. What are some of the activities you can enjoy at that place? Say you have to review about a historical place. What are some of the activities you can do there? Are they like it? Any other possible aspects that you may be able to discuss? Cleanliness also, yes? Okay. Vacuum? Oh, the queue, the crowd, okay. But that would usually fall under environment. You can say there's a large, uh, there's always a large crowd there and so on. Or remember, just a note, just for you to note, you can't use contractions in part three. What are contractions? Contractions are words like this. It's or I'm. Don't use this. Spell in full for part two and three. Okay? Okay, do you need time to copy? Okay. Oh, what does tangible mean? Uh, we have a question from online. Tangible means something that you can hold with your hand. Something that's physically um, available to you. Is it a problem if we write exceeding the word limit? Is it a problem? No, it's not a problem. If you can still finish your essay within the, uh, the allocated time. Okay. Contraxy, contractions. Wow, this teacher is so mantap. Oh, this technique is so mantap. I thought teacher. Okay. Uh, I'll give you another 30 seconds. Or you can always take a picture and copy later. 30 seconds. We are going, next we are going through how do you manage all these scattered points and organize them into paragraphs? I really like the new SPM format. You are the third batch to, to answer the, this format, right? So I really like this format. At first, I thought it's like super easy as compared to the previous year. Previous year, your super seniors had to write two essays in one hour and 15 minutes. And each essay is so long, like 300, 350 words. And these days, you need to write email, 100 words, 80 words, and review. But come to think of it, 
this is very this can come in very handy it's very practical because it's something that you do almost daily right you review things to your friends your family and whatnot okay let's move on to the next one we have a sample question here but before that let's check out how do you manage your paragraph for every, uh, for a review writing Remember, this is a guideline only, only a guideline. You can follow this guideline or if you have a better way to write review, you can use yours. Now, let's talk about paragraph one, which is the introduction paragraph. I, I wrote that you need to introduce the product, service or place or the experience. But what do you write? How do you introduce whatever that you are reviewing? Come again. Who uses the product? The use, how you use the product? Okay, you can. The usage of the product. What the product is. Basically, you introduce the product. Not everyone knows the product. Um, what can we review? Eh? Or if, for example, if you are reviewing a book, you may want to write two sentences on what the book is generally about. Or if you are reviewing a restaurant, for example, you can talk this restaurant serves Japanese and local food. So you introduce the product, but remember, do not put any, um, do not put any opinion. Do not give any opinion yet. Don't insert any opinion in paragraph one. Because why? You want to save your opinions to the other paragraph. You're showing something, but I couldn't see it. Oh, this teacher is beautiful. Thank you. I hope that will give you A plus later in English. Okay, why don't you give any opinion for paragraph one? Because we want you to save those opinions in your body paragraphs. Okay? So you introduce the product without writing any opinion. What the, what the, where the restaurant is? Or what the restaurant is serving to you? Jangan bagi, don't give any, uh, my favorite food at the restaurant is what and what. Don't yet. You just, and perhaps you can share a little bit of your experience there. I went to this hotel last couple of months with my family and I'm, I am going to review my experience there. Okay, so you write your usage, introduction of the product or when you experience it or when you experience or use the product. Okay? So what do you write in your body paragraph? My question to you is, must you write all the positive things about the products or service or the places? No. But if you feel like writing something that is not too good, you have to have that skill to write what we call constructive feedback. Hmm. Constructive, I would say feedback, not criticism. Okay, you cannot say things like, that food sucks. I'm sorry. But you can't say something that's too negative. What happens if you are reviewing something that's not tasty? How do you give a constructive feedback? How do you write it? Um, yeah, you can say, I experienced something unpleasant which the seller can improve. So when we say constructive, it's always about giving an idea or suggestion on how those things can be improved. How they can improve. Instead of saying um, the story, the, the storyline of the movie is terrible. So maybe you don't want to say that. You can say it makes me sleepy throughout the movie. I think if there is an element of humor, the movie could have been better. Okay, so that is what we call constructive feedback. Do not write something that is too negative in your essay. So, 
in your body paragraph, these are the elements that you may want to include. Number one, the aspect. The aspect, the, the ones that you that we discussed earlier, the price and whatnot. So you write the aspect, and you can't simply say the price of this chandol is four ringgit and eighty cent. There. Does that make it a review? No. So what's a review? What's the definition of review? You want to give your opinion, right? Or what you feel about four ringgit and eighty cent of a chandol. So when you simply write the price, or when you say, for example, uh, I am going to review a beach, and the beach is Teluk Kemang in Port Dickson. Teluk Kemang is located 120 km from Shah Alam, for example. And that's all. That is not a review. That is an article. That is an information. What makes it a review? Your thoughts about it. So what's up with 120 km? Oh, it's a little bit too far for some people because you would need to pay seven ringgit for the toll and so on. So your, it becomes a review if you give what you think about it, if you give what you feel about it. Do you understand? So first, you state the fact, the fact about the place, and then you write what you feel about it or what your view is about it. Don't simply give uh, a fact. Don't end your paragraph without giving your opinion about the price. Okay, say the price of the chandol that you are reviewing is 4 ringgit and 80 cents. So what's up with 4 ringgit and 80 cents? How do you put your view on that? It is affordable. And perhaps you can compare this chandol with another chandol you used to buy before. The other chandol that I used to buy before was 3 ringgit. But the portion is a little bit too small for my family to enjoy. So, how do you write your feeling or your view on this? Is one by comparing, by writing a comparison. You can compare with something or a previous experience, or you can compare with everyone's general thought about it. So usually, four ringgit and 80 cent is generally cheap or expensive. Okay, who thinks four ringgit and 80 cent is cheap for chendol? Huh, come again? Oh, okay, okay. Four ringgit, 80 cent for, do you guys know what chendol is? Okay. So, uh, so four ringgit and 80 cent for a basic chendol with chendol, uh, gula melaka, coconut milk, and ice. And red beans. Okay, four ringgit and eighty cents. Who thinks that kind of chandol is cheap? Raise your hand. Four ringgit eighty cents. Okay, who thinks four ringgit and eighty cents for that kind of chandol is kind of expensive? Okay, so this is what we I when I say general. Thank you. You can put down your hand. This is what I when I say general thoughts on something, this is what you can include also. Like, I think, I know that a lot of people think that 4 ringgit and 80 cent is quite on the expensive side for a chandol, but to me, it is still affordable considering the portion that I get. Okay, you see? So you put your comparison or you... You write down your comparison and then you write down your personal experience on that. Or you can write down a general what would the general what would the general public think about it? The general public's opinion. This is how you make an information a review. So please remember to include what you feel or how you opine that information to make it a review. Don't simply put information, then you better write uh, an article. Okay, paragraph three is also the same. Is masih menyalin ke? Okay, okay. Miss, can you share the formats for writing review article and report? I am sharing the format now, but I wouldn't say this a format because there is no mark for format. 
This is merely a guideline for especially for those who don't know how to write a review. I don't know what to write first. I don't know what to write in second paragraph. So this is basically it. There's no specific, there's no format for any of your essay except for the burger format, introduction, body, and also concluding. When are we reviewing? Do we tell it like a story? Okay, that's a legit question. So do you write your review like, a, like you write a story? Yes and no, depending on the instruction. So if the instruction asks you to write a review to, to where? Somewhere that's formal. To Malaysian Food Institute, or I'm not sure if that even exists. Um, to somewhere that's official, you need to write a review to the, to the prime minister's office, for example. Your review cannot sound like it's a story. Kenapa tak best ke? Kenapa balik? So anyway, your review cannot sound like it's a story. But if you are, say if, if they ask you to write a review for a magazine, for your friends to read, then it can sound like a story. So to answer that, it depends on where you write the review, read the instruction carefully. Can I use contraction for part one? Yes. In your email, in your letter, you can use contraction. <laughs> If we use grammatical language, is it okay? I don't understand that question. Can you share the format for writing review? Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, have you finished copying this? Okay, um, next. I suggested that you write five paragraphs, but not necessarily. You can write four paragraphs, but each paragraph should contain 60 to 70 words. So if you wish to write five paragraphs, each paragraph can contain about 50 words. Now let's look at the um, number of words, suggested number of words. 250 words divided by five paragraphs equals to about 50 words per paragraph. But if you wish to write only four paragraphs, please do the maths for me. 250 divided by four. 60 plus, okay, I'll put 65 words per paragraph. This is also how you manage your time and number of words for your uh, part three. This can apply for any story, review, article, or report. Okay, let's move on. For example, if you have nothing nice, nothing nothing more nice to say about the product, place, or service, you can always provide your constructive feedback in the second last paragraph, for example. I would say you write a room to improve. And how do you go about this? You write suggestions. Instead of saying, this place is horrible, you say this place can be better. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give two examples of sentences. Which is to avoid and which is to use. Number one, this, contoh je, this place is horrendous. Or you can say, there are some ways to improve this place. I mean, it's not wrong to call out the place or the product. But remember, I mentioned earlier, this is SPM. This is where you play safe. This is not a TikTok review where you can simply do anything you want. You want to maintain the kind of language that may not offend anyone. For example, if you are reviewing a burger, and then it so happens that the examiner likes the burger that you are reviewing. And then you say, this burger sucks, it makes me fat. Okay. 
So, uh, but yeah, but the examiner likes the burger. Remember, an examiner is also a human being. You don't want to you want to minimize any room to offend anyone in your writing. You are not there to explain yourself. So you may want to play safe by using positive remarks. So the first sentence in red over there sounds very negative and may be offensive to especially your examiner. By playing safe, by writing the sentence in green, you may minimize the room for offense. You mungkin tak akan menyebabkan examiner tu terasa probably because the examiner likes the product things or experience that you are reviewing. Okay? Remember, you can be expressive in SPM but always play safe because SPM is the key to unlock your future. Last one. How do you end your paragraph? I know. How do you end your essay? You may include recommendation or rating. So whether you recommend the, this is the conclusion. Whether you recommend it or not, yes or no, and why. And if you wish to give a rating, you can say, I'm giving this a rating uh, four out of five, for example, or any nine out of ten, any kind of rating that you're giving. I'm giving this place a four star. I'm giving teacher Azura ten out of ten because she wears pink, my favorite color. Okay. Okay, we are going to analyze a review essay that I have written for you. Do we have time? Oh my God, we have 40 minutes left. Okay. So we are going to review this very quickly. <clears throat> um, this is a review. Uh, I hope it's okay that I don't ask anyone to read because I want to finish on time and I want to cover story very quickly. Okay, let me read the review question here for you. Have you attended any short courses lately? What are examples of short courses? Today's SPM seminar is an example of short course. What are the examples of short course that you can think of? Workshop of what? Specific matter. What do you learn in the workshop, for example? Writing workshop, some more. What else can you learn? What are what other short course can you attend? Filming workshops, some more? Swimming, sports, archery, training of what? Sports, music, arts, think. Additional classes. So um, any short course here can, uh, it's not limited to the subjects you learn at school. It could be anything. It could be public speaking, music course, guitar course, swimming class, um, taekwondo course. I'm not sure if you can learn taekwondo in one day, but any short course, any skill-based course is also acceptable. Send us your course review. Share what you learn in the course. Okay, this is also part of the question. What you learn in the course and how it benefited you. Would you recommend the course to others and why? And this course will be published in the magazine. All right, so this is a review to be put in the school magazine. Um, can you write this as though as you write a story? Yes, because it's for your school magazine. And not your school magazine. It's a, it's a magazine. So magazine is supposed to be casual in general. So look at paragraph one. Let me read for you very quickly. In the last school holiday, I enrolled myself in a public speaking course called Speak Up Like a Professional to improve my presentation skill. It was a three-day course and was held at Primary Learning Center, that's my center, in Wang Samaju, Kuala Lumpur. Did I write any opinion about the course in the paragraph? No. What did I write there? What's the gist of paragraph one there? My experience, what, yeah, what the course is about, is speak up like a professional. And the where, basically where, where it was held. It was held in Wang Semaju KL. It was held for three days in Wang Semaju KL. Is there any opinion in paragraph one? No, so you should, I mean, you should emulate the same in your review later also. 
The first paragraph. It is the first body paragraph. Read on your own and tell me what's the main aspect that I covered there. Apa aspect utama yang saya cover dekat situ? What they teach, betul? Mind setting techniques and how to combat anxiety before a presentation. That is the fact. What is the opinion? Where do I start writing my opinion about the course? Second last paragraph. I personally found that the techniques were easy to follow. So remember when writing a review, write the fact and then write your opinion about that fact. Understand? Paragraph three. What is the main point, the main aspect to discuss in paragraph three? The instructors. Okay? What is the, where does the opinion begin? Second paragraph? Second sentence. They were not only experts, they were approachable. And then how they help you basically. And paragraph four, second last paragraph is the constructive feedback I gave about the program. What is the constructive feedback I gave? Did I say anything bad about the, pro, 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 apa? the experience? No. So what was my constructive uh, feedback here? Yes, it's too short because I said could have been longer. I did not say it's too short because too short is the negative way of saying that. I said it could have been longer. So for example, if you want to say, if you want to give a feedback, about something that's too small, for example, you can say the size of the book could have been bigger. Okay, understand? Next, last paragraph. What's my recommendation? Did I recommend the course or not? Yes, because I said I highly recommend. Do I give any rating? No. So, but if you if you know how to elaborate your last paragraph in 50 words, you can do that without giving any rating. Giving a rating actually helps students who don't know how to, you know, write longer in the last paragraph. Any question from the public about um, review? Teacher, EC negative masuk paragraph kat mana? Actually, anywhere also can. But um, based on my suggestion here, you can write in the fourth paragraph or second last paragraph. Because you want to start your review with something that's positive, positive, and then something that you think could have been better. What is horrendous? Horrendous is terrible, very bad. Yes. Title, you can, um, but if you don't, you won't get penalized also. But to be safe, uh, it's all, remember for SPM, it's always okay to write more. You won't be penalized for writing more. And if you feel like writing title can help give a better perspective to the, I mean, better impression and better understanding about the, uh, your essay to the examiner, then uh, go ahead. Any other question regarding this? Oh, I'm asked to give you a break for three to five minutes. Okay. Oh. Okay, so let's take a three minutes break and when we come back, we'll do a very quick um, a very quick um, discussion on story and then we'll end this with a quiz where the top, I think top five people will win some prizes from the AC. Okay, three minutes break. Okay, let's get back to business. I have some questions here from... Actually, I keep getting questions from the online students. If, if you have any question too, like some of you have already asked, you can just raise your hands. How else can they ask their question? Uh, you can just open TikTok and ask your question there. Or you can just raise your hand. Okay, in review, do we have to write the themes on top of our writing? I think the title. Do do you need to write a title to your review? It's not compulsory, 
But if you want to write, it's okay. You can write a title or the theme. Do we need an interval to go to the next paragraph? I'm not sure what does this interval refer to. Perhaps the cohesive device. Yes, if you if you want to use a co any cohesive device, you can. Do you, do you already know any cohesive device and the correct use of them? But you can just Google them, okay? <laughs> because we are not covering that today. Okay, but I can just share some. In case if you want to add points, what are the usual, typical cohesive device that you use? Next, boring. Next. Besides. Some more? Besides, uh, besides that. Furthermore. Moreover. In addition, some more. Come again. Or digressing further. Or you can say, apart from that, uh, on top of that, Remember to use this only if you want to add similar points. Okay. But what if you want to write opposing points? Just now you, you want to talk about everything that's positive uh, about the product or the place or the experience. Now you want to digress. I mean, you want to talk about the opposing opinion. You want to talk about something that's not so good. However, although... However, yes, you can use although, but correctly. Meanwhile, uh, yet, yeah, I'll write the short, short one first. In the opposite word. Oh, okay. In the opposite spectrum. Correct. On the contrary. Um, nevertheless, nonetheless, all this carry the same meaning, eh? None, oh, sorry. Nevertheless, nonetheless, or you can use but, but not in the beginning of a sentence. Okay, or you can use also here. So you can use this interchangeably. Remember the left side here, I mean this side, is if you want to add points, add similar points. On this side is when you want to add opposing points, give opposing opinion. Maksudnya pendapat yang berlawanan. So you must use your connectors accurately or else you will lose marks for language. Obviously, there are hundreds of others connectors, like when you do, when you want to compare, when you want to give example. But these are some for you to use. You can always Google cohesive devices and bump lots of um, Google uh, results will show you or direct you how to uh, the on the examples of cohesive devices. Okay. Take your time to copy, but not too much time. Nor, neither. Okay, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting people online. We have in spite of also, or despite. But remember, only use the connectors or the decode. <laughs> Only use the cohesive devices that you understand or that you know how to use. Don't use cohesive devices that you don't understand. Sorry lah, terlupakan you all. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the very last part of our discussion because we don't have much time. So we are going to discuss story. What's the difference between a story and other types of essay? 
Why is it a story? What is a story? Mm, the linking device. But in essence, what is a story? How is a story different from a typical essay? A normal other essay? Testing. I think I cannot move. Let's say you need to How insulting. Oh, but your normal essay also must start and end with something also. You can make up, yes. You can make up your story. For example, if you are you are writing a story, if you are writing a story uh, about your recent holiday experience, and this holiday experience is where you went to planet, uh, uh, you went to Venus using Tesla, uh, Elon Musk's newest rocket and whatnot. Can you write that? Yes, because it's your, it's your experience. So it's up to you what kind of experience or what kind of uh, vacation you want to write. In other words, your story can be as imaginative as you want, can be as um, creative as you want. It doesn't have to be logical. Um, tak perlu logic. Okay, but... The difference between a story and other essay is that a story has characters and most importantly, it has a plot. If it doesn't have a plot, it becomes an article, point one, point, one, point two, point three, point four. So you must remember the main, the main essence of a story is the characters and the plot. So now let's take a look at story. Okay. This is an example. Uh, remember just now when I gave you the timing breakdown, I asked you to, to plan your essay in seven minutes. So this is the how you want to plan your essay in seven minutes. Take a look at this. This is on page Mm, page six. I created this tool, and this tool is called Story Brainstorming Tool. In other words, this is to help you to plan ideas to write a story. Okay, just to share something. This just to share a story with you. I took SPM um, about twenty years ago. So uh, during my time. And even until I furthered my study at the university, I never attempted to write any story. Why? Because I don't know how to shorten, to manage my ideas. Because in SPM, how many words must you write in a story? Maximum? 250. So it's so short. It's not like you're writing a 300, 600 page of uh, a novel length uh, story. And I did not know, nobody taught me how to manage my ideas, how to write my story in just 250 words, how to write a story in 40 minutes. As I become a teacher, I figured a technique on uh, helping students to manage their ideas, to write an essay, a story in 40 minutes in 250 words. So this is how this story brainstorming tool come about. Okay, I have put here nine steps for you to follow in order for you to plan for your story. Number one, kita, we go very quickly. Eh? Number one is the log line. Okay, Log line is basically a one or two sentence um, statement describing the story. Okay, let's read this. An arrogant hare challenged a tortoise for a race and was embarrassingly defeated. What do you think this, what story is this? Cita apa ni? Arnab and Kura? Kura, or the, uh, the tortoise and the hare. Hare is rabbit. So, a log line is the first thing that comes to your head when you see the instruction, the story, the instruction of a story. For example, if you went to watch a movie last night, and I say, hey, Zakwan, what's the movie about? So you describe the story in one to two sentences. Understand? So this is what log line is. When you read the instruction, bila terbaca je arahan, benda terpertama yang ter, terlintas di fikiran, how your story is going to be is the log line. So I'm going to write about a boy who loves um, fishing so much 
and suddenly lives in the underwater world and becomes Aquaman, for example. Okay? Step number two is for you to list down the characters. The character, oh, okay, also in log lines just now. In the log line is where you determine whether you want to write romance or drama or adventure and whatnot. So you have the basic idea. In other words, the log line is the basic idea, the general idea of your story. That's the first thing that you must um, be clear of you, because you cannot suddenly change this in the middle of your essay, in the middle of writing your story. Step two is for you to write the characters. So remember, when writing the characters, you must remember to come up with a name, if any, and also how you imagine the character will be. The physical features of the character, the personality, does he have any dream? Does he have any challenges in life? So you include that. How many characters, uh, and also the definition of characters are the characters that make up the storyline, the characters that affect the storyline. So for example, if you're writing a story about a boy who performed um, during the school assembly, are the audience there considered the characters or not? Why? They say no, and why? Uh, there's no personality, and whether or not they are there do not affect the storyline. So remember, the characters are the people or character, if it's animal, animal. If it's a made-up character, then it's a made-up character. So characters are the characters that affect the storyline. For a 250-word essay, how many characters are ideal for you to write? Two to three. Three is maximum. Don't write too many. If it's an, a picnic or any adventure, limit it to three main characters. Okay? So here the characters are the hare, the rabbit is now, and the tortoise. Okay. Lipas. <laughs> Such an insult to my cute drawing. Okay, next. Time setting. Time setting in Bahasa, since your batch do not learn literature anymore. Time setting is, um, in Bahasa Melayu, we call latar masa. So basically, it's what is the duration of the whole story to compress in five paragraphs. For example, if you're writing a story about Aquaman just now, how much time of his lifetime do you want to include in the story? One day also can. The whole life from the birth until he graduates also can. So you determine. By determining, by determining that, you can manage your paragraph. For example, I will write the paragraph about his childhood in the first paragraph and his teenage years in the second paragraph the conflict or the climax in the third paragraph. So that's how you plan. So, But if a story is only within one day, how do you manage? Maybe in the morning, first paragraph. Afternoon, second paragraph. That's how you manage the time setting. Fourth one is the place setting. Basically, the place. How many places... Latar tempat, betul. How many places can you include in a 250-word story? Three is too much, two maximum. Remember, you need to manage the ideas. You need to manage the story. If there are too many places, you will describe so many more things and that will consume your time. And you will not, if, uh, you will not be able to finish your essay. Okay, so that's the first part of planning for your story. The next part would be the most important, which is your plot. Here, if you notice, there are five plots beginning with exposition, rising action. These are all technical terms, but you don't have to remember that. What you need to remember is this is paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, paragraph four, and paragraph five. The climax is the most important part, and that is why the climax is the fifth step after the place uh, setting. What is a climax? Yeah, the, mm, 
the main important event that changes the course of the story. For example, here can the, the climax in the tortoise and the hare is when the tortoise overtook the hare. It's very unlikely for a slow tortoise, for a slow animal like that, can overtake a very fast animal like a rabbit. So this is like a plot twist. This is like, like if, you, if you're falling asleep and suddenly, wow, seriously, he overtook and you, you suddenly wake up because of this climax. Um, this should be the middle part of your uh, essay, which is the third paragraph. Okay. Next, you need to determine how to end your paragraph, which is part C, uh, the step, step six, your second last paragraph. And the last paragraph over here, part seven, is where you write your moral value and whatnot. Okay, my question is, is it compulsory to include moral value in your essay? Your story? Who says yes? It's compulsory to must put moral value in your story. Who says it's not compulsory? Habis yang tak angkat tangan ni apa? You don't know. Nak jawab slowly? Uh, oh, tak jawab story. But regardless, this is general knowledge. If it so happens that you don't know how to write a review and you have to, you know, use story as your backup plan, you need to know this. It's not compulsory to end your story with a moral value. In fact, your story doesn't even have to have a moral value. It's not part of the assessment. What's part of the assessment are the four things. Uh, content, organization, uh, communicative achievement, and language. Not necessary for you to write moral value. Okay. Then only you determine what to write the introduction in the introduction and then what to write in the uh, second paragraph or basically how you grow, develop your story. I'm going to story very quickly because we are running out of time, but I still want to cover this because I know that um, if it so happens that you cannot write review because you don't know the, the thing that you that is in the question, you can always opt for story. Okay. Okay. I'm told to jawab soalan online. Okay, can we scroll out a little bit? Uh, but before that, do we have any question? Uh, for the story, you can always refer to an example, the essay sample I have written here. This is based on a previous year, a previous SPM question. And I wrote this. This is actually 350 words now. Uh, the question here is, do we have to write a story in a certain tense, whether present tense or past tense? What do you think? There's no particular tense that you must use, but if you wish to use past tense, the whole essay must be in past tense. If you wish to use present tense, the whole uh, essay must be in present tense. But usually, if you use past tense and there are dialogue, you must make sure your dialogues are in present tense because it's real time. Okay, uh, this, uh, the essay sample here is 350 words because this is based on the previous SPM format. But what I want to show you is the storyline, how you manage the climax because the climax is here. And then the, the characters, the main characters here are Shafiq and Iza. This is basically a story about me and my husband. I'm Iza. And Shafiq is my husband, and then the rest you can read on your own. And it's not romance. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Any other question on story? Okay, let's address some questions from online. How to improve my writing skills, teacher? My grammar is too bad, and I'm an SPM candidate. You guys are lucky because you can always Google SPM. Uh, I'm sorry. You always can Google grammar questions. For example, you can type in Google uh, a specific grammar question, grammar exercise. For example, you can search for, if you are bad in cohesive device, right? You can type cohesive device exercise online. You can type on Google, and a lot of um, websites will offer online questions for you to attempt. Can we, like, can we write something like romance? Yes, you can. You can write romance, you can write thriller, you can write ghost story and whatnot. 
Can we review book that is about love relationship? Yes, there is no restriction on that. Is the dialogue paragraph will take as one paragraph? It depends. You can write something like this. Um, you can write something like this. Like this is a dialogue, right? Or you can separate the dialogue into a different paragraph. It doesn't matter. Okay? Story basically use past tense. Good teacher. I usually encourage students to use past tense because if you use present tense, students usually have the tendency to make grammar error. Contohnya macam, you, you usually miss the S, right? Like you say, Ahmad always enjoy swimming. Is there any grammar error in this sentence? Where? Enjoys. So that's why I normally recommend students to use past tense. Because past tense will not regard singular or plural. Okay. How about paper one? Saya tak pro bab error grammar tu. Oh, okay. Mm, all I can suggest is for you to check out our website, basicflix.com. Um, because we have covered paper one, paper two, paper three in uh, basicflix.com. Okay, any other question? I think we have come to the end. Uh, I, I know that two and a half hours is not enough, but I really hope that you at least learn and bring back something home. Um, uh, for I would like to apologize for any uh, shortcoming, and I pray that everyone here in this room and watching online will get A plus for English. Amen.